Hey everyone, so I'm a big fan of my Tesla Powerwall 2, but sometimes it does some weird stuff. So I thought I'd just do a quick video to kind of explain some of the modes of operation. So either existing owners, or those of you thinking about buying one, or perhaps you've got one in order and you're still waiting for it, to kind of understand a little bit more about kind of how it operates. Right, so first off, apologies if you can hear my dog panting in the background. We just got back uh, from a long walk this evening and she's a bit uh, tired out. But uh, background noises aside, um, I've got a few things set up here. So I've got my iPhone connected up into my laptop so I can record what's happening on the screen to take you uh, all through that. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about kind of the modes of operation. Um, these are the things that are specifically in the advanced menu system. Um, so that you guys can understand how best to configure your Tesla Powerwall 2 for your own requirements. So the one thing I should say is um, as of, well, as we're recording this video now in kind of mid-May 2019, as of around um, April 2019, all newly ordered um, Tesla Powerwalls have the Gateway 2. This enables um, backup capability um, I don't have that, so I can't talk specifically about that uh, and the experiences, but just give you, I guess, a higher overview. And hopefully at some time in the future, um, I'll have an opportunity to share with you a bit more about the Powerwall 2 with the Backup Gateway, because I know some of you guys had them already and quite a few have been kind enough to offer uh, the opportunity to kind of have a look at one. So this is just about the Powerwall 2, the, the Gateway 1, which doesn't have um, the option for backup. So let's uh, get this into record mode and then uh, show you what I can see on my screen. Okay, so if you have a Tesla Powerwall 2 already, you'll be quite familiar with this. So once you've logged in to the app, it will show you um, what's currently happening. So you can see right now, I've got 60% storage on my battery and I'm currently discharging and I've got lights and projectors on all sorts of things at the moment so uh, quite a lot of uh, energy being utilized but what we're interested in here is the customize option right here uh, down the bottom and just to get it's relevant for the future I'm currently running version 1.35.2 so if we go into the customized option if you have the Gateway 2, I know that you do have an option uh, for backup only. And basically what the backup only is going to do is kind of, as it says, 100% of the energy that is stored uh, in that in the Powerwall 2 is only going to be utilized if there is a power outage and then your house will fall back to running off solar. It's not going to use it for, uh, off the battery, sorry, it's not going to use it for anything else. My understanding is by default that would be configured to charge from solar, uh, but you probably can also configure it to um, charge up uh, from the grid for then a later uh, backup capability. So um, we'll start off with kind of how things uh, typically tend to be con configured out of the box. So most people who have a Tesla Powerwall 2 will be configured for um, self-powered. Basically what this means is um, any energy that you generate uh, from your solar system will typically have priority to go in and charge up um, the battery. So that then when the sun goes down and your solar system is no longer providing um, sufficient power to your house, the power will, will kind of take over that load. And it will kind of do that in partnership with the solar until um, all dependency on solar has gone. So for example, if you're using one kilowatt of energy in your house and um, your solar system is generating 500 watts as the sun goes down the uh, power will start to supply the other 500 watts to, to maintain your house and obviously then slowly fully transfer for over um, to your power wall and it, the power will continue to run your house until two things happen one is um, solar generation starts again the next day and takes over the power requirements of your house or you run out of power in your power wall and then it will switch um, to grid usage so this is basically um, how it will prioritize things. So that's how you're going to have things set up um, most of the time. Then you have these, what they call the advanced options, and there are kind of two settings we have here. 
As you can see, I'm using um, cost saving, but there is also this option for balanced as well. So you can see here, balanced is to use stored solar power for your home when electricity is expensive and after the sun goes down, and cost saving is using stored low cost energy to power your home when electricity is expensive and maximize your savings. One thing to note with these customizable options, if you've only just had your uh, Tesla Powerwall 2 installed, these things won't be available to you straight away. It takes a little bit of time for them to become available. Um, when you're using the advanced mode, it's also important to um, set up your kind of energy pricing structure. Uh, you can do this both for the week and for the weekend. And depending on um, where you're based, there may be some slight differences here. So typically here in the UK, we only have kind of two tariffs. We have peak and we have um, off peak. I know in some countries you have um, peak, off peak and shoulder. My understanding is shoulder is um, like the general um, kind of consumption from the grid. So just give an example, shoulder might be from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m., which is kind of when electricity is generally being used uh, by the populace in that area. But then you would have a peak time of kind of in between five and seven or something, because that's when people are at home cooking the dinner, watching TV, that kind of thing. But here in the UK, we just have um, the peak and off peak. And as I've got, um, and with Oxford Energy and I have the go tariff, this enables me to have off peak usage in between um, half past 12 in the morning and 4.30. So that's why I have that set up like that. Then if you have um, cost savings set up, basically the kind of priority works in the following. So the priority is to um, utilize solar as much as possible. So if the sun is out, your power will kind of go into charge or standby mode and utilize solar as much as possible. As mentioned, it will kind of um, kind of balance out based on how much solar you're getting, how much your house needs and all that sort of thing. Then it um, will go to off peak. So this is where it kind of gets interesting. So if you don't have much energy in your power wall and it thinks that you're going to use more um, energy in the morning before the battery runs out, it will actually pull from the grid during that off peak because it's really trying to maximize your cost savings. So it thinks you're going to run out of energy in the morning before um, the sun comes up. So it will allow you to store and retain that energy in your power wall to use it a bit later when the energy prices are up again and will run your house um, from the off peak time. So the problem well, I guess not really such a problem, but thing to keep in mind with all of this is there is some real funky kind of intelligence happening in the power wall and the fact it's connected to the internet and it's looking at weather forecasting and your usage to try and work out how best to kind of either provide a cost saving um, running environment or a balanced environment. And the thing to keep in mind is the power wall is not a mind reader. So it can only run based on what it knows from your historical usage. So if you um, plug in your car to charge, say at seven o'clock in the morning, and obviously there's a massive um, pull uh, from the grid or from the power wall, from whatever you're using, the power wall obviously will be learning that and say, hey, on Monday, the guy plugged in his car, so I need to be ready for that next Monday. What it can't do is obviously decide that you might decide to charge your car on Tuesday because you have a trip coming up and then know to pull from the grid um, you know, to, to maximize the cheap energy and then kind of have you benefit from that. So keep that in mind. This is a learning device. It learns what you're doing day by day. It does think about things on a daily basis. So Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday and Sunday. And it's also looking at weather forecasting and this sort of thing to see what do you typically do on a Monday? What does your usage tend to be? Um, what does your system usually generate? What does the forecast say? So do I need to do um, certain things or not? Then if we look at um, balanced, the idea here with balance is really that it's trying to use as much solar energy um, as you can 
and then as soon as the sun goes down, um, switch to using the power really. So it doesn't really give um, too much consideration for peak and off peak time. So I know some people um, in the summer months will consider moving back to self powered or moving to balance to try and avoid uh, the power will try to be too smart and pull from the grid. In general, I find that cost saving tip is reliable and it does um, what it needs to do. And I did actually think that when the weather got better that I would probably have to switch back to self power because sometimes the power will do some weird stuff. Uh, but in general, I'm pretty happy with how it operates and it's very rare that it does the weirdness where it decides to pull from the grid from a little bit. The, um, I guess the one thing to keep in mind, regardless of um, whether you're kind of using self-powered or advanced, if your power does deplete too much and it, and it doesn't get um, you know, recharged in the solar or something, it will do maintenance cycles and it will pull um, from the grid. So you have to see that in the app. Um, and even though um, you may have constant solar and constant charging, it will still sometimes decide to do uh, a maintenance cycle um, can sometimes last like 10, 15 minutes. It is only a small draw, but it definitely does do um, some weird stuff. I'll just see if there's any um, examples of this happening um, recently. So, nothing there. Yesterday, no. So far for the week. It's not really easy to see here. So, I think that, so they're just things to keep in mind. Really, that's how um, the power will think about things. So, really, the key thing is remembering that your power wall is not a mind reader. It's going to try and use um, the information it can to prioritize using solar or cheaper electricity versus more expensive electricity. But it can only do that based on kind of learning what you do over time. So, you, you, you get penalized basically for being sporadic and stuff with this kind of approach. I do wish that in a way that there was some ability to kind of force certain things to happen. So to be able to kind of provide a bit more information as opposed to just completely relying on him being a kind of learning device. Um, but in general, it does use, it's uh, what they, I think what Tesla called the intelligence yeah, intelligence forecasting is I think what they call it and in general it does work pretty well. So I hope that kind of explains a little bit about kind of how your power wall operates. Um, in my experience, um, like I say, it works pretty well. One thing that you will notice is if you look on the app, when the app says that you have 0% left, you tend to have somewhere between three to 5% actually left still in the battery and it will not deplete, uh, at least on the uh, the version with the Gateway One. I have seen in recent firmware updates over the last kind of four or five months, they have increased the threshold of how much you can fully discharge the battery. So I know that um, if, it's, if the power is performing well, it will discharge to a maximum of 3% before it then stops and we're then kind of going to a standby mode. I have seen it once, uh, I guess the draw must have been high, so it must have been going on it, let it deplete down to 2%, um, and then it would kind of just pull from the grid to just get back up to that 3% put, put into standby. So you do have the ability to utilize you know, that full 13.5 kilowatts it says that you should be able to use out of the 14 kilowatt um, battery. But again, just various things to keep in mind when you go for these modes of operation with a, with a solar setup. Thanks for watching this video. A thumbs up would be really appreciated. If you're interested in other geek type videos, please consider subscribing to Spectrum Geeks. Why not also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And before you leave, why don't you check out one of these other videos that may be of interest. Thanks again for watching.